wenzetu. Kwa sababu kuna kuna watu ambao kabila sacrifice inakuwa ni kibarua. And you know what? You shall never I shall never we shall never serve God in our comfort zone. It will never happen. Serving God calls for sacrifice. Someone defines sacrifice as a sema. Sacrifice is going beyond your comfort zone. Ni kutoka kwenye nafasi ambayo kuna ausi na zinyo kuingia kwenye nafasi ambayo kuna zinyo jamani. Wakati misumari yuko na kwenye mikono ya Yesu, hata tunapoangalia ikizo la sema Passion of Christ you wanna get a mama wengine hata kina baba wengine machozi na watoto na it's just a feeling ni hizo ukiona Yesu pale anayeingiza kama Yesu misumari ingia kwenye mikono anatoa sauti ya uchungu ina maana kwamba Yesu alichofanya hakikwa kitu chepesi alikwenda damu alisikia uchungu akipiga mjereni ili mimi na wewe tuwe jinsi tulivyo leo hii Paulo anasema Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yetu ili na sisi leo tusiishi kwa ajili yetu tuishi kwa ajili yake which calls for sacrifice na hiyo ndio kitu inashinda wa Kristo wa Kristo wengi wanataka comfort wanataka kumtumikia Mungu wakati eh afinyiki mahali lakini kwa kumtumikia Mungu kutafinya muda wake kufinya na mali yake kufinya na resources zake hapo hataki nataka Yesu ambaye uncomfortable it will not happen If you want to serve God in a way that will attract actually the blessings of God, then my dear brothers and sisters, that calls for sacrifice. Sahih kabindu, tunahema. Na tunahema kwa nini? Tunajenga nyumba ya milioni 118. Sasa hatufanyani chini. Ruzi ni 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 jana ha eh Friday tumekuwa na battle of night. Watu tumekaa pale mpaka saa 7. Na kuna event zimepanga. Zote ni pesa uko kwenye jumuiya uko kwenye shirika uko wapi sote na sasa ndio kibarua tumepewa tumeelekea kwenye ratibu kwamba nimekuwa kwa kadiru miaka yote je nitatimia kadiru ama nitapata kadiru kwa sababu mume yajebo hiyo ndio kuna wakristo wanabadilishaka parokia na majumuiya na mashirika ikifika kwenye majukumu kama yale kipindi cha michango angalia jirani mimi haifai kwa hiyo wakati wa michango na kuwa ama ndio umeingia mitini tunzidi wa kristo When we talk of mtumishi uh, mwaminifu the catechism of the church inatufundisha imani ya kweli inatufundisha kwamba Mungu aituumba kwa sababu ngapi for divine reasons number one, tumjue number two, number three, na ya mwisho hizi nne tatu hizi ukizishikanisha zinapaswa zipee sawa ili zikuwezeshe kufikia hii ya kwamba mwanzo umjue yeye yeah, ni nani unjue huyu sio mwanadamu huyu sio yule tu mtu wa kawaida huyu ni baba yako mtambue ukishamjua umpende kwa kumpenda umtumikie alafu haya matatu ya kusaidia kwamba baada ya maisha yako hapa duniani utapata nafasi ya kukutana naye maybe we should also remind ourselves this morning that we are not permanent residents katika dunia Hatuishi hapa milele ngeo kile nani mwambie uchao marehemu mtarajiwa. Hapa ana swali mwambie niulize nini alafu tutajiana. Sasa number one, for us to be able to serve God faithfully, number one, we should know him on a personal level, not collective, not communal, on a personal level. Lazima nitambue Mungu mimi kama mungu. Sio mimi na mama yangu na baba yangu, sio mimi na my brothers and sisters why no god on a personal level do i have a personal relationship with him because when we talk about salvation it is something very personal haina nada de pacto haina kati wewe na mungu na mke wako wewe na mama wako na mungu wewe na watoto wako na mungu hapana ni wewe na mungu one on one so number one ni lazima nimtambue who is god know him mungu ni nani kwako unajua Heshima unayompa baba yako na heshima unayompa mjomba na heshima unayompa jirani zote ni heshima lakini on different levels kweli ama si kweli kweli heshima unayompa jirani it is not the same unayompa baba yako so inamaanisha heshima unayompa Mungu kwa ina depend na umemtambua Mungu kama nani kwenye maisha yako always Ukisha mtambua umpe nafasi yake hiyo ndio itadetermine the respect 
Even the kind of worship utampa inakuwa determined na who is God to you on a personal level. Tunapaswa kumtambua Mungu ni nani? Mwanzo yeye ni nani kwako? Sasa cha kwanza cha kutambua ni kwamba Mungu ni baba yako. That is the first point. We should actually acknowledge God as God as you are God in heaven. Kumtambua Mungu kama baba kutaleta tofauti yote na ubora wote katika uhusiano wako na yeye. Na kutafungua mlango hiyo kufika kwenye maisha yako ukiangalia na step ya kwanza he is my dad. Jamani watu wote wako pale barabarani. Wakipigana moja alipigwa si ajabu ukamsikia akisema tutasema na dadi, tutasema na dadi. Wewe kama si kweli. Huyu mtoto anaposema tutasema na dadi, hata kama aliyepiga ana nguvu. Kwa huyu mtoto hakuna mtu anapiga baba yake. Unasikia wengine ajana mwanzaji amenunua kitu anasema hata mimi baba wangu atafanya nini? Dadi pia atanunulia hata kama dadi ana kibarua wakati huo. Kwa huyu mtoto hataki kujua anajua nini? Baba yangu atanunua. Acknowledging God as your dad will even change your mode of prayers. It will even increase the faith you have in him. That whatever you are praying for, you are not directing your prayer to just anybody. Sala yako utatambua si ni kwamba ukipo na damu kama mimi. Hapana. Huyu ni nae mwambia abariki kazi yangu. Huyu ni nae mwambia ashukuke na biashara yangu. Huyu ni nae mwambia nahitaji mtoto kwa ndoa yangu. He is not just anybody. He is my dad. Sikia sasa kwa sababu baba yako inamaanisha even the service you want to give him katika nyumba yake it will be different and on a different level so number one is acknowledging god as your dad sasa yeremia si 29 jeremiah 29 verse 11 to 13 biblia inasema hivi for i know the plans i have for you are good plans to prosper you and give you hope in the future kwa maana natua mipango niliyo nayo ni mipango mizuri juu yako kukupa tumaini na baadaye sasa anayetamka haya maneno sio yule jirani yako sio yule ni dada ambaye alikuzaa sio mmoja ambaye amekuajiri kazi anayetamka haya maneno juu ya maisha yako ni baba yako wa mbinguni baba ambaye above all ni mweza wa yote hajai shii wanga siku moja so unapomtambua kama baba alafu utambue anachokupangia ni chema You will be content even though you are facing challenges. Dakika hii utajua regardless of the challenges that I'm facing katika store yake Mungu na katika mipango yake Mungu kuna mema yanayokuja yako njiani. Na hiyo ndio itakupotivate. Hata kama unapitia changamoto utakimbia kanisa. Hata kama unapitia changamoto utawacha jumuiya. Hata kama unapitia changamoto shughuli zote zinazo kibarini wewe ama zinakuta wewe usitumikie ndani ya kanisa hautakimbia regardless ya changamoto unazopitia. Lakini hii yote inategemea na uhusiano ulio nao na huyu Mungu. Ukimtambua ni baba yako anayekuwa zia mema. Hata kama unakutana na wewe watu wanakucheka hata wewe mwenyewe unafika baba unasema niende kwenye nchi kama nisiende. Niende kwenye nchi kama nisiende. Wataonaje watu? Watasemaje watu? kisha kumbuka a a siendi kwa ajili ya watu waseme wasiseme ni baba yangu na huyu baba ananipenda na ananiwazia mema inakusukuma kweli we don't stand before people kwa sababu mambo ni mazuri si kwa mbele yenu leo kwa sababu maisha yangu yako mteremko nina changamoto tena za kutosha lakini hazini kwani nika nikarudi nyuma kiimani hazini kwani nikaakimbia majukumu yangu huni mwaka wangu wa 14 katika huduma hii kama nikuzunguka ile jibu wengine kama ni parokesi ya ingeni za kuhesabiwa mbili tatu lakini kuna wakati unapitia changamoto sio kama wacha ni mtaramko even though we are serving God hawa mapadri unaona hapa na siku mungu kwa nafasi ambayo amelipa wengi alifanya kazi nao tunakuja kukutua you know sisi wa Kristo sote tunapelekana shida zetu kwa nani kwa baba lakini really do we take time kuelewa kwamba na wao pia wana changamoto kwa sababu mwanadamu sawa eh lakini changamoto wanazopitia hazifai atakosa kufunga kwenye altari na kututolea misa ndipo kambi yako wa Kristo tunapaswa kuchukua nafasi ya kuombea sio kwa kasi kuombea wewe unafikiria shetani anataka kutawanya kondoo anataka kuwa kondoo mchungaji wa kondoo 
Wewe ukiwa mimi na watu kupata changamoto, hawa kwa wanapata times 2 times 3 ya changamoto ambazo wewe unapitia. Kwa nini? Father, alisema hiyo alitaka kukaoka kama ni parokia. Haina haja ya kwenda kwa Kristo mmoja kwa mmoja, aende kwa viongozi, aanzie pale juu kichwa, akikonda kichwa vizuri, basi kondoa na kawanyika. So it is upon us kuwaombea sio kuwakashi mzingi wa Kristo. So ukishaelewa baba yako anakuanzia mema. Na kama wewe uimaje na imani zawadi? Wani, ni jambo, ni 